Hey and welcome to another episode of Behind the Shield. This is a Ask Me Anything from Jussi Meresma, Discmania CEO and a part two. In this part I'm gonna go through a questions that are more aimed to myself and our company so please enjoy. So let's begin. What is your favorite disc? My all-time favorite disc is Discmania P2. This is a putter but can be used as a mid-range and driver too. So anything inside 250 to 300 feet, I'm pretty much using P2 when it comes to the shot that I need to make. Uh, P2 is primarily a putter. It's also one of the most uh, popular putter in the pro scene. Simon Eagle and many others are playing and throwing the P2. For me, the P2 is a disc that I can always trust. So if I miss, miss a shot on the course with the P2, I can always go and look to myself that, okay, I made the mistake. The disc has a great flight abilities, like it, it's a high speed stable, but also it has the sensitiveness on the low speed throws and putts. So P2 on a D line, especially that I would never leave the course without one. I actually have many of them. So P2, my favorite disc all time. Uh, where will Discmania Combine events be this year? Uh, we haven't done any decisions yet. Avery Jenkins is running that uh, operations for us and we try to pick and choose uh, places in the US and probably one in the Europe that can fit uh, as many people to be able to a part attend to that event. So Discmania Combine information is coming later this year to our homepage. So check the Discmania net for that. What part of your game do you think needs the most work? Well, I haven't been actively playing tournaments in 2015, so in five years. So obviously my disc golf has been lately testing discs and playing fun casual rounds over the once a week. So definitely my short game. Even I was praising the P2 a moment ago, I haven't spent enough time with them on the basket. So putting game will be definitely something that I would look into if I want to increase my, my score or not increase my score, but better my score on the course. Then if you could change something about the past of the company, what would it be and why? This was a good question. And after thinking a while, I have to say that making the leap of faith earlier with Discmania. I mean, I established the Discmania 2006, so almost 15 years ago. But looking back now, I would like to have it done it earlier. So I'm super happy where Discmania is at the moment. But what if we have done it? What if I could have done it earlier? So remember, if you are thinking something that you have a passion for it, go for it. Don't make any plan Bs. Just make the leap of faith, follow your dreams, and good things will happen. What are three things that have brought you success with the European Open over the last 10 years? Well, first of all, this summer the European Open will have a 10-year anniversary, so this is a really relevant question. We started 2006 with our first PDGA major in Europe, and I think one of our key success stories has been that we have always had top level professional players in our tournament, and especially American players. So starting from 2006, seven, we had players like Ken Climo, David Felberg, Avery Jenkins, Valerie Jenkins. Those players were really important for our early days success because that was the first time the local players in Finland could actually see American pros. And obviously disc golf was not that big in Finland 2006. So having those top level pros coming to our event from the start has been really important for us. And nowadays, obviously having, uh, you know, superstars like Simon Eagle, Paul, Ricky, Nate and such guys, they are bringing more and more spectators to our tournament. So that has been one point. The other point I would say is that uh, from the start, I have wanted to create this tournament a great experience for everybody. Obviously, as a player, when you enter the or when you get the spot to European Open, you can feel that when you step on the first tee, we're announcing your name, nationality and your team, you feel like a professional player. And that's our goal from the whole tournament. So we want to treat you as a professional player. 
that makes you coming back for year after year. Also, the experience has to go both ways. So we also want to offer an unforgettable tournament experience for the spectators. Of course, seeing the superstars, but also having the services and everything needs to run smoothly. That will make people come back year after year. So having a great experience for players, spectators, of course, viewers and our partners is really important. And I think that's one reason behind our success. And the third thing I would say that the venue, you can have all players, you can have, you know, you can create them a great experience and also for the spectators. But if the course and the venue is not matching that, it will be a trouble. So having a Nokia disc golf course and Nokia Center, Sp Center Park has been really important for our success. So of course, having that kind of a venue is really important. So those three things. Where do you see Discmania in five years? Uh, our mentality at Discmania is that we want to be the world's leading disc golf company. That means that we, we're not going to be the biggest one necessarily. We're not going to be the most sold brand, but all the actions we do behind the scenes, whether it's a logistics, marketing strategies, anything, I mean, personal hiring, we want to make things and we want to act like the world leading disc golf company. I don't want to leave any stones unturned when we're doing things inside our company. So especially people who are working with us, they have probably noticed that we, we have a way of, do, you know, we have a certain way of doing things. And marketing wise, we of course, we want to push out our players first and, and our brand second. But it's more like an attitude. And I don't have any specific goal in mind what, what where will we, we will be in five years. But it's more like it has to be a steady incline, steady growth, steady progress over the years. And we want to always chase the carrot. I, I don't want to be satisfied. I want to I want to be always hungry and remember also stay hungry so you will actually reach your goals faster. What brought the decision to partner up with multiple companies to manufacture disc manias discs and are there any big changes coming in the future? This is a great question. So probably exactly one year ago last Valentine's Day we made this big announcement of collaborating with Latitude and Yikun and of course reinforcing our uh, partnership with Innova and since that it's been only one year and it feels like it's been a wild ride and in most of the positive ways so it's really important for us obviously to keep existing partnerships and get them as strong as possible so I, I, I've been really happy with the with the work with the Innova in the last year or so but also bringing these new companies the reason why we brought them in is that Discmania wants to be a progressive Dis, uh, disruptive brand and I mean in in typically in the disc golf scene there is a one manufacturer one one factory making discs for one brand and of course if there is a, another collaborating brand they are getting their discs only from one manufacturer we feel that disc mania is larger than that collaboration we we don't want to restrict our possibilities outside one manufacturer and this is nothing against that one specific manufacturer but it's just that we want to be in the best possible position to offer discs for our customers so i'm pretty sure that there are now more disc mania fans than a year ago some people like this plastic from the evolution line some people really love the new active stuff and of course there is a lot of people who are throwing our originals line so our strategy is to offer things that our customers want. And with this partnership collaboration, we're able to do it more effectively than any other company in the world. In theory, Discmania has the biggest manufacturing capacity behind us at the moment. So, of course, there's a good position to be. Will be there any changes in the near future? No. We're not looking actively new manufacturers that we can collaborate because there has to be something more than just, okay, you can make discs for us. If there is a manufacturer in the future who can actually bring something to the table that these existing manufacturers are not able or willing to do, of course, we are open to the discussions. But at the moment, we are super happy working with these partners in the future. 
Do you see Discmania having the title sponsor to an NT major disc golf pro tour in the ne near future, much like Innova with the Las Vegas Challenge or Discraft with the Memorial? This is a good question. Our focus has not been uh, partnering or sponsoring uh, individual events, especially in the US. Of course, we are working with our local event like Skiss the Sky in Colorado, but uh, uh, I believe, as a marketing director of Discmania too, is that I don't want to collaborate necessarily an individual Pro Tour event that we don't have any attachment outside that sponsorship. I mean, we don't, ha we don't have any uh, organizational partnership or anything like that, because that is ne not necessarily bringing us enough value that we're looking for. We are sponsoring a big events in Europe, such as European Championships, which will be a Discmania's title event this year, but we are also more involved with the media uh, and organizational sides because I feel that when we are involved with all those levels, we will get benefit more to everybody. It's going to be a win-win for everybody. So our work of sponsoring events is a little bit different than probably in the other companies. And I understand that because not every company is running uh, such an extensive uh, uh, video production crews like we at the Spin TV or something like that. So. We have a little different approach of sponsoring events and maybe in the future we will expand that in the US soil. The legend says that you aced the original layout hole 12 at Yulkujarvi Disc Golf Park in the very first opening contest years ago. True or false? Well, this is partly true. I did. I have aced that hole, but not in the competition. And Yulkujarvi Disc Golf Park is a great course and we're adding that course into our European Amateur Open tournament this year so over 500 players will experience that course and that hole number 12 will be there. I don't remember now which hole that was but it's, it's going to be really interesting to see how the European Amateur Open players will survive the Julkujärvi, the Moon Valley. And what inspired you to create a disc golf company? Well, this is a little longer story. Bear with me. So I started disc golf in 1994, which is 25 plus years ago. And uh, during that time, of course, I was heavily, heavily interested of making myself as the best possible disc golfer because I, I got hooked with the game. I was passionate to make my career as a disc golf pro. During that time, there were less than 10 disc golf courses in Finland, so being a disc golf pro was literally impossible in Finland, Europe, almost in the world. At that time, there were only few pros playing the game like Ken Klimo. And I wasn't satisfied for that situation, so I switched the, my mentality pretty fast after a couple of years of trying to be the best possible player I was into the way that, okay, let's build the sport. I need to make create the way how these 10 courses can be 100 courses or 500 courses. And for, through that, to build the sport and actually so the sport of disc golf can sustain professional players. And fast forward 2020, here we are at the moment. Finland has over 700 disc golf courses. I think we have five to six professional players playing mainly, of course, outside Finland over the season, but we have done it. I've done it. So I have built the sport together with all my partners and, and colleagues so it can now sustain professional disc golfers like I was in the 1999. And I have been able to build a company that sustain over 30 people uh, making this as a living. So I have reached that goal and my inspiration from that time that, okay, there is actually an industry called disc golf in Finland. So that has been, of course, the most inspirational thing if I'm looking back in the 25 years. And with this story, I can only encourage you that if you have an inspiration and passion for something, go for it, you know, make the leap of faith, follow your dreams because the dreams will happen if you want to want them bad enough and stay hungry. Thank you for this episode of Behind the Sealed and Ask Me Anything. I'm probably going to run another Ask Me Anything later this year. But before that, please like and subscribe this video and our channel and see you next time.